This is Gabby Guppy with Corn Events running an exclusive investigation into the demise of Tristan Sunara. Follow me in this series of exposés where we get down to the truth of what happened in the days leading up to the Trident Concordant. Let's gab! It's difficult to pinpoint where exactly the trouble began. In my early research, a few individuals keep appearing in the center of this network of intrigue. Trithemia Sumaji, Castel Zuri, and Lindis Vale attended Tristan's funeral. I overheard their conversation detailing a successful revival, but lasting only seconds. It seems the cause of death may be linked to the drug Thresh infused in the food identified by expert Hector Levesque. To unearth more details of Thresh, I've also followed leads on the top Thresh match fighter, Mud, an unhinged Herringon, who seems to have some connection to this case. My assistant Gary searched his home and found a note instructing Mud to take care of Trithemia Sumaji. Castell's suspicion of Hector came to a boiling point on the deck of the Salty Fox, where the guards attempted to arrest Hector only to be aided by discharged symposium inspector Grim Brightwood. Several eyewitnesses reported Castell in hot pursuit of the masked figure, demanding answers for the late prince's demise. This is Gabby Guppy with Corn Events. Stay tuned. This is Gabby Guppy with Corn Events, continuing the exclusive investigation into the demise of Tristan Sonara. Let's gab! Castell and Lindis caught and interrogated Hector, determining that he and Grim Brightwood were innocent. For now. Citizens of Corn, it appears I may not be the only one on the case, but rest assured I will scoop the scoop out from under them if I have to. The tense ceasefire broke when the deranged Heron gone Mud tackled Trithemius off the boat in an attempted kidnapping. Mud was quickly apprehended and confessed that he was sent to take care of Trithemius with orders straight from Fobletcho Umaji, Trithemius' brother. Could this sinister plot reside within our royal family? Meanwhile, I sent my assistant I'm Gary. Not your assistant. Shh, I sent our cameraman Gary to tail Grim and Hector. While scouting the palace, Grim met a strange character from the mysterious Umbral Arcanium. Meanwhile, the innocent Hector stole a potion of water breathing. Back at the Corona Corrales, Lady Panya Coral Chasm summoned Lindis for a private meeting. I was unable to glean any details of their conversation, but as Lindis left the chambers, she appeared out of sorts and not herself. Currently, I'm undercover at the Prince's funeral festivities, keeping a keen eye on those five individuals. They have joined forces at this raucous party filled with fireballs and frivolous party favors. And thank the gods I attended, the Empress has just arrived. This is Gabby Guppy with Corn Events. Stay tuned. This is Gabby Guppy with Corn Events, continuing to report on the murder of Tristan Sonara. Let's gab! The grief stricken Empress entered the festivities as revelers toasted her recently deceased son. Despite her presence, the five individuals I've been tailing snuck away to the scene of the crime. Not wishing to blow my cover, I conjured my surveillance familiar to fishtail them. Lindis, through powerful divinations, revealed that the cheese leading to Tristan's demise came from Hector's monastery. She also determined an elemental mud creature tampered with the cheese, creatures known to be employed by Fabuleko Umagi. Meanwhile, Mud, through his thresh-induced gaze, spotted a sewer grate existing only in the ethereal realm. It is well known, viewers, that the sewers and corns lead to the undercorrent. All streams of this investigation seem to lead to Fable Echo, but there are still too many unanswered questions to be sure of his guilt. I'm sorry, viewers. I had to break the connection with my familiar. The palace is under attack! A giant frog is monster is wreaking havoc and devouring guests! The palace is enveloped in chaos. I'm taking cover, but I've also spotted the Lord Grumpus suspiciously cowering within the commotion instead of fleeing. The five individuals have sprung into action against the creature and a hidden assassin. Luckily, Lindis Vale has managed to temporarily banish the giant creature, but her spell won't hold forever. This is Gabby Guppy, reporting from under a table. This is a developing story. Stay tuned. This is Gabby Guppy with Corn Events taking cover in the Corona Corrales Ballroom. There's an uneasy and tense moment of stillness before the creature returns. Oh, Paxios, it's back! Viewers, I'll do my best to give a play by play of the action. Gary, are you getting this? Gary! The recently banished frog hemoth returns to a well timed trap. An onslaught of magic and melee trounces the overgrown amphibian, but I'm afraid it's not enough. This froggy's just getting heated. It's pummeling and slobbering all over the party guests. 
Oh no, the frog king has just swallowed Linda's veil in mud! Gilfriend is starting to look grim. No, really, Grim Brightwood is now summoning an impressive display of lightning and... Implosion on contact! Oh great, now I'm covered in frog phlegm! Ugh! The excitement isn't over yet. Lindis and Mud emerge from the riveting remnants, but Lindis is acting very strange, referring to themselves as Roger? Wait, I believe that's the name of her husband. What is going on? Huh? The Empress has returned! Understandably outraged, the Empress demands the arrest of Lord Trumpet, who seemingly brought the frog he as a gift. Castell attempts to sway her, but she is steadfast in her resolve. However, she offers them lodging at the palace in exchange for their continued investigation. Well, they may be under the Empress's employ, but I will be the one to report to the people. That Seabody Award is as good as mine! Now that the Empress has left, Roger details some gruesome and mysterious facts. After Roger's mortal injury, Lindis ensured her husband's survival by absorbing his consciousness in her body. The two seem to switch control irregularly, with their only form of communication being a journal they share. I don't know if this is a medical breakthrough or a crime against mortality. Gary, I'm in the middle of... Right now? Gilfriends, things are moving quickly in Corrent. I'm told that the raid of Fable Echo is currently underway in the undercurrent. This is Gabby Guppy with Corrent Events. Stay tuned. No, I'm not going to. The citizens of Pearlscar deserve the truth, and no one, not even you, are going to prevent me from doing so. This is Gabby Guppy from Corn Events. The raid on the fabled Echo proved inconclusive, but instead resulted in a titanic clash of wits between Fable Echo and Castell. There may be choppy waters ahead for the future in-laws. The authorities did, however, confiscate the entirety of Fable Echo's thresh supply while he is under investigation. Meanwhile, my fish lens camera tailed Grim and Roger to the mysterious Umbral Arcanium, a secret trove of knowledge hidden within Pearlscar's own library. Grim unveiled a deep necromantic magic, binding Roger to his wife's soul. I've reached out to local magical law experts about the legality of such practices, but I fear a lack of precedence offers little insight in the matter. The next day, our investigators split up to look for clues. Grim, Mud, and Castell, with me close behind, returned to the prince's room now under the influence of Thresh. Grim sent his arcane intelligence device Liz down the sewer grate. A shadowy force seemed to pull at Grim's essence before the connection was abruptly severed. Could this be what happened to our prince? Meanwhile, Gary followed Hector and Lindis, who discovered the frog human's food had been laced with Thresh. Supposedly, this is what caused the rampage on the castle. Many clues are reeling in with no clear suspect at the moment. This just in, Desaria's Coral Chasm is proposing a trial of strength, calling on the heirs to showcase their battle capabilities in a thresh match. The Empress accepted the motion, and the court voted with a resounding eye, despite Lindis' lone declination. This is sure to be a landmark event in this Trident Concordant. This is Gabby Guppy reporting for- Stay tuned for updates. This is Gabby Guppy with Corn Events giving you all the latest on the Trident Concordant. With the announcement of the Concordant battle, let's examine each house and who will be fighting for them. In House Umaji, Trithemius secured Castell and Mud to his cause. Lord Grumpus, in a bid for the vacant third slot, is vying for Hector's support. House Coral Chasm is leaning on the assumption of Lindis' devotion to the Fae, but Lindis is of the mind that the Empress should reconsider stepping down. Currently, the Corn Event Concordant poll shows... Who made this chart? That's not... No. No, I'm not showing that until I see a peer-reviewed source. Sorry, Gil friends, we're experiencing technical difficulties. Back to my investigation. Despite unclear house loyalties, the subjects of my investigation stocked up on supplies at the Runic Valkyrie. Tensions rose quickly when Grimm drank from Lindis' cup, invoking an ancient fey technique allowing him to view her memories. The reckless invasion of privacy showed Grimm the exact details of Lindis' desperate attempt to save her husband using the powers of the Rivers of Els. This revelation inspired the idea to locate Tristan's cup and reveal his final memories. The potency of the Rivers of Els is further confirmed by the chemist Devon at Periodic Fables. 
It seems that while under the influence of Thresh, a person could stumble into the rivers of Els and have their soul pulled down, never to return. Corn Events would like to remind our viewers that the rivers are extremely dangerous and should only be approached by experts. This is Gabby Guppy with Corn Events. Stay tuned. Where are you taking that camera? What is this script? You can't put that Brass Soldier Company logo there. That breaks Symposium Code 54 on advertisement for public viewing. What do you mean it was overturned? Since when? Hey, that's my- Gary? Gary, we're getting out of here. Get my camera. No, that's mine. Hi, Gil friends. This is Gabby Guppy. I'm currently live on the streets outside the Court Events Studio. The Brass Soldier Company is compromising my investigation, tampering with data, and pushing their corporation's agenda. I... I think I'm being followed. Citizens of Corinth, they must not want me to tell you this, which means you need to know. In my investigation, the search continues for Tristan Sonar's cup to glimpse into his memories. In their haste, Grimm accidentally blew Roger's cover in front of Lady Panya. The Lady Panya took Roger into her chambers where he admitted to what Lindis had done to save him. And in return, Lady Panya admitted her true allegiance to Erezire, the god of death and decay. She released Roger with the promise of Lindis' sworn allegiance. Meanwhile, Hector Levesque snuck away to investigate the kitchens and the infused cheese. He discovered the last person who delivered the cheese to Tristan was the Squire Squin. The search for the cup leads them towards Fable Echo in the Undercorrent. Taking the sewers for a quicker route, they are ambushed by Void Vipers. Once thought a myth, these twin-headed ethereal serpents have a nasty bite that will send you out of this world. Literally. What was that? Gary? Run! No, Gary, this way! Shit! Gary! No, 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 no! 